Well, it's just a little after 10 o'clock on January 8th, the 8th of January. Ten hours to, to the day. And the usual non-scheduled events are, are occurring again where I'm awake for a bit, asleep for a bit, awake for a bit, asleep for a bit. In other words, there is no day and there is no night. I've just finished uh, a series, a bit of work that I had to get done. This includes edited another video, a ride vlog video, a road video, uh, road vlog. Did some gaming, did some reading, did a little bit on my YouTube stroll. Had something to eat, and now I'm ready to go back to bed. So. Doesn't really need to be said that much, but, but, but rather this is going to be a short segment because that's fundamentally what's going through my mind right now in terms of uh, uh, how things are going. Because, uh, because sometimes audio does fail, it is always important occasionally to <laughs> contradiction in terms of oxymoron, an oxymoron. Uh, it's important to do a sound check every now and again. Just do a small clip, see how it sounds. If it sounds okay, then you're ready to go again. Uh, coming in from I guess another new endpoint in my explorations in the dream world. And for me, the, the exploration in the dream world is as real as being awake. The, the, the awareness is still there. The, uh, the existence is there. And what's happening more and more is the two worlds that I exist in, the waking world and the sleeping world, the dream world, are starting to merge. My behaviors are starting to merge. Uh, and as that happens, you develop new understandings, come to new realizations. And in some of them, uh, it, it's the acceptance that there will never be any final conclusions. You know, in other words, you don't come to a conclusion. That what happens, and this is happens at, at a point as you're starting to wake up, the thoughts and the dream continues. And as you move into the wake state, there is a, a brief period of time for about a 50 minutes to a half hour. Where you stay in a pensive state of mind, in a meditative state of mind, a, a very deep meditative state of mind. Uh, going over the experiences that you had and how you feel about what has occurred uh, in a more, you know, in a more controlled manner. And the thing is, if, if, you're, if your thoughts On one side or the other, it start to merge to the point where they're they are consistent with whether you're awake or asleep. And that's what you want. That's what you're aiming for. That this is the 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 sort of the conjoined meditative state. And my mouth is parched, and I need to have a little bit of something to drink. After waking up, that my body has burnt through all the fuel that I went to that I went to bed last night. It's gone through everything. Uh, in the winters, I keep it cold. In the summers, I keep it hot. In the summers, uh, is typically around eighty degrees. 
and in the winter I keep it just about 60 degrees. So in some form or another my body is always working. It's always in that state of uh, extended uh, conditioning. And it seems to work well with the physiology. It seems to work well in terms of uh, engineering and sculpting the body. And this works well in many cases with the with maintaining maintaining the meditative state that you uh, intend to uh, to have whether you're awake or asleep. And this rises the what's what's been ha and this rises for the week where there's been very little sleep in terms of a consistency in terms of day and night. Uh it, it's this is I can't remember how many times we've been here saying that it's it's January 8th. It's Friday, January 8th. It's uh, just about uh, uh, 21 hours and 54 minutes into the day. But I can't tell you whether this is the beginning of a vlog or the end of, the end of a vlog. It really depends on how things shape up. And of course, when I go back to edit the stuff to put together a vlog to, to post, uh, my views and thoughts may have changed by then. And so, well, I'm going to put this in in one vlog or another, so there is no you know, with 24-7 there is no necessary beginning or end to a vlog uh, uh, it's continuous, it is what it is, and um so I had some, needed something to drink now I'm going to have a little something to eat because we do have a package opening a package came in, I have no idea what it is but uh, we will open that package and uh, go from there Right now, I need a little something in my in my system. This is kind of a, a wake up thing. This is a Reese's peanut butter cup. I do I do enjoy those. The transition from awake to asleep and, and to awake again in terms of the physical condition is now simply a shift in tasks, a shift in, in what needs to be done. And as you go through this and begin to have that realization, um... How you see the world changes. And in terms of what I want to bring out, and this, this is the sort of thing as I'm sort of thinking about bringing out, bringing out, you know, work, working on bringing out the show meditations and bringing out the show, which is a news uh, sort of. It's not actually news, but it's it's like news. Is the psychological analysis of society. How we behave in society, and how in soci how society behaves in general, is the psychological enough? It's analysis of the spiritual state of the world, and this is the this is the ironic part is that people don't necessarily recognize the soul, because maybe they're atheists or whatever, and this is where the contradiction comes in because. A large chunk of the world is Freudian, as I mentioned before. Freud was an atheist, and yet, to cho and yet chose to call the, his area of study psychology. And psychology literally means study of the soul. 
So here's an atheist who doesn't believe in the soul, calling his area of the study, his area of study, the study of the soul. It is the study of things by a person who believes that doesn't exist, of a non-existent field. So psychology is non goes moves into a phase of non-existence. This is what's going on here, is that in the 1960s, the psychedelic movement gave rise to a, a theory that the world fundamentally doesn't exist. It, it, it is a, and this is what the whole postmodern concept is. The postmodern concept is complete chaos and destruction. Because there is no order, there is no structure, everything's fundamentally an illusion. You have the other side who are the nihilists. And they are the flip side of the coin of postmodernism. And again, you have the philosophies existing in two states. But it's not specifically left or right. It's a nihilist who take up the position of kindness and love for everything, regardless of what you think it is. Uh, because everything is simply a concept. But then those on the other side, you have you have those who see nothing but destruction. Because there is no there is no fundamental existence. The existence is gone. These are the anarchists, and the two sides actually clash. And what happens? Those who sit within we'll call the Marxist sphere, which is basically the Freudian sphere. The Marxist sphere, sphere, what people call Marxism, is again itself an illusion. It's not real. What it is, Marxism is the observation of society <clears throat> through the influences of Darwin. So it's basically Darwin applied to the human society. And that's what, that's what Marxism is. It's a Darwinistic view of society that we are to live the way Darwin, Darwin's theory uh, sort of Exposed and, and, or explained or, dis, or or stated that this is the way things should be. That's Marxism. But Marxism ended in 1945 and up came the nihilists and the anarchists. They were actually used by both uh, uh, Stalin, uh, they were used by uh, uh, Vladimir Lenin and, and, and Trotsky during the Russian Revolution. You can sort of if you go look, read Dostoevsky, you'll see a large chunk of what I'm talking about in terms of, and you'll see a large chunk of what's going on today in Dostoevsky. This is this is what's going on today is not new. It's it's a repeat of history, and the consequences are going to be the same. We're going to have millions of people dying from starvation. We're going to have millions of people being executed because they don't fit a particular mold or design or design the society wants us to have. And let me bring this out here, this the package. And we're back in this again. We're, 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 the events that are unfolded that we think are, are, are unusual or strange really aren't. They're part of history. What is somewhat new in this perspective is the whole experience of non-existence that we really fundamentally don't exist. This is new. And it was a development of two psychologists They're the ones who brought forward the initial the initial realization of what the occur of what was occurring as we get the package open occurred in 1945. 
and it's a result of uh, atomic physics, nuclear physics, quantum physics. Quantum physics had stated that there is no there is no um, way of predicting science. And science up until that point had been easily predicted. That's how they came up with the term, that's how uh, Darwin came up with this term, that we are living in a Darwinistic society, that we live, uh, okay, I know what these are. These are boxes that I have to put together, and I will do that in a bit. So we'll put them back up here. And that, everything could be predicted. And this is where they were able to say, you know, with, with the work of Newton and, 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 and what we'll call classical physics, that things were laws. It's because they, could, they felt that they could determine everything, that, that the world was determined. That's what they called deterministic physics. It was the work by Einstein and in the, in the beginning work, who worked off the beginning, and he is the grandfather of quantum, phys quantum physics, that's Maxwell Planck, said it, stated from his experiments, experiments that the world is not predictable, that there is an un unpredictability. And he did this with the experiment called the ultraviolet catastrophe, in which he, ironically enough, developed the theory that, uh, uh, again, not by, see, theories were typically developed by the mind and then later on proven by experiment. So as long as you could prove what the mind was already already understood by experiment, then you were right. But he reversed the, the thing. He reversed the we call the the scientific method. Rather than having the purpose first, he removed it all together and said, "Let's do the experimentation. We'll take the observation and draw our conclusions from there afterwards." And they said, "No, you can't do that. You, you know that's not the way you do science." What's well, it? didn't care, went ahead and did it anyways, and what we found out is that rather than having having black bodies, this is the, the, the theory of heat, simply continuously absorb heat, he found the heat was absorbed to a maximum and then released uh, at various different wavelengths. But you always had the absorption phase first, it came to a peak and then became an emitter. Where do we see this? We see this in, in bodies of water. Why do you, when you, when, when you, let's say you dip into a pool uh, early in the morning, it's very bright outside, it's very nice, and, and uh, the sun is shining bright, but you dip into the pool and it's freezing cold, it's, it's frigid. But you go at night, let's say, you go for a midnight swim, and if there's enough lights on there, then you have the, the side lights in the pool and stuff like that, you can see these little sprites, these little uh, columns of evaporation coming off the pool, you're going into the water, and it's nice and warm. Well, that's Planck's, that's Planck's, back, uh, uh, Planck's experiment. Showing that the, the body's uh, uh, physical matter absorbs energy to a certain particular point and then re-emits it again. This understanding is not in the uh, UN's, the International Panel on Climate Change. It's not in their model. And I understand we're, not, we're working, you're working on a model here. They do, this is why they talk about the average temperature. If they understood Planck's black body, black body radiation, they wouldn't be talking about average temperature because Planck's uh, uh, the black body radiation uh, mechanism doesn't have an average. You can't average it because they're two different things. If there's some, if there's some, if something is different from each other, significantly different from each other, you can't average it together. You can talk about a midpoint for which where, where something crosses over, but you can't talk about an average. And what happens is is that. Uh, the model that is that you're you're working with that we're seeing with the uh, we call this the, the environmental movement is wrong. It's, it's it's like it's like what you see with the, the, the 
what we're what I'm calling chronic Catholic because you can't say the word on YouTube. It's just as wrong. Because there's a complete misunderstanding in the mechanism that is occurring. But yet, bureaucrats and people who are in government are so single-minded about their power and their absolution of power that they refuse to see anything outside of their view as something real. And so they create their own views, they create their own world, and they live within that world. And anything that contradicts that world, including people, if they don't fit within that world, they have to go, because they contradict what you believe. And this is why the left, today, is in very much the same boat, the same functionality, as the religious right. There is no difference between the left and the religious right. There is Because they're equally as religious. We're just talking about people who are religious, including the left. The left are religious. They haven't transcended their own views. They are not outside the matrix. Most people who, who that I've met who say, oh, I've been red pill." Well, no, you haven't. Watching these people, how they how they they operate and what they think, they haven't been red pill. They're simply a herd of people following another shepherd. In order to be proper, the proper be properly, and this is what I said before, be outside the matrix, and it's a lonely thing to do, is to be have only yourself as the leader. But of course, even there. There's always something to look look towards, to explore, to understand that, you, that again, it's not just about you. That there's others around you. That you're in a sea in a world of 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 other things and other people. Once that understanding is is there, then the and, and the nature of the self is is diminished or dimmed down to a, a, a proper point. Then you begin to see. But until you get that point of having yourself, your own ego, dimmed down, then you don't see. It's primarily, and this is what you see with most of the politicians, like Biden, Trudeau, and so on and so forth, the people who, who, who pretend to be philanthropic, it's about their own ego. They haven't dimmed their own ego. They haven't dimmed their ego now. And this is the problem with Donald Trump. He wasn't able to conquer his ego. 